Hey everyone, my name is Yuk from Income Tech and welcome to this course. In today's course, we're going to be looking at Jet Appointment. So basically, we're going to build a website. It's going to be a barbershop website that supports booking functionality. So we're going to be using Elementor Pro for this website. We're going to be using Jet Engine for this website. And we're going to be using Jet Appointment for this website. So basically, we're going to create a barbershop and uh, it supports all kinds of things. So uh, you have multiple services, uh, you can price these services, you can uh, set images, dynamic images, everything for these services, but you can also make an appointment with uh, the specialist that offers this service. So uh, as I said, we're going to be creating a barbershop, we're gonna making it from start to finish, so everything I'm going to do with you. It's gonna be a really long course, I think, I don't know. Um, I think it's gonna be a long course, but you're gonna learn a lot from it, definitely. Um, stick, uh, stick to the video, it's gonna be worthwhile. Uh, I listed all of the chapters in the description down below so you can go ahead and skip some uh, chapters if you uh, feel the need to. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, I hope you guys you learned something from this video. If you did, please let me know in the comment section down below um, so I know what uh, content I should create in the future. Um, yeah. So um, hopefully you'll like it and uh, let's take a look at the website. So this is the website that we are going to be creating. Um, it's a Dutch website I made, so right now it's translated with edge, so don't uh, mind uh, the spelling and the grammar. Anyway, this is the website we're gonna make. So you can see we have a nice little hero section with a transparent header. If we scroll down, it's gonna be uh, black. We can make an appointment by clicking on it and then we can click on color, for example. It's 15 US, it says US <laughs> euros. Uh, you can click a specialist, click on next, and then you can select a time slot and a date click on next, fill in your information, and then both you and the specialist receive an email with an update that uh, this booking has been completed. Also in the back end of the website, you have a complete system overview of all of your bookings that have been done at that uh, specific moment, uh, which have been done, which are still coming, uh, with the pricing, the specialist, also phone information, everything. So it's a full registration system. All right, so if we scroll down, you just have a nice little homepage, as you can see, with some rates and specialists that we have, customers. But the really cool thing is, if we go to services and we scroll down and we go to book an appointment, we can select our style with the pricing, let's say color. And from here, we can select our specialist. And we can also book our appointment from here. But what we can also do is go to the specific service itself. Uh, Cutman here, obviously. And then from here, we can also select the specialist and book our appointment. And that is really amazing. And that is exactly what we are going to build in the upcoming course. All right, so I am in the, um, in the WordPress dashboard of the new website that I made. Um, it's completely empty. I only installed a couple of plugins so that are that uh, those are the plugins that we are going to use. So let's take a look. If we go to plugins, I installed the classic editor because I personally hate the new editor. Uh, we're using Elementor and Elementor Pro. This is something that you do need, so keep that in mind. Uh, we are using Jet Appointments Booking and Jet Engine. And for now, these are the only plugins that we are going to use. In the future, we might add some new ones. All right, furthermore, in the appearance on themes, I installed the Hello Elementor. Um, personally, I think it's the best theme out there. It's lightweight, it's really customizable, and um, yes, yeah, just it's really fast. I use it for all of my websites, and I highly recommend you use it too. All right, other than that, uh, I don't have any pages other than the default ones. And let me see in the media, I added a couple of pictures that I am going to use for this website. If you want these pictures, you can just find them on Unsplashed, but I'll also add a link in the description where you can download a uh, folder 
with all of these images except this uh, nice picture of me. Um, but yeah, all right. So the very first thing we're going to look at is the style guide. So this is the styling that we're going to use throughout the entire website. So the font is going to be Work Sans. Uh, and then we have a couple of headings and some colors, nothing too special here. But the heading one, so the first heading is going to be 60 pixels, uh, big with 700 uh, um, weight. The subheading two, uh, that's what I call it for some reason. Um, but it's 43 pixels and it's 600 uh, weight. Uh, the subheading is going to be 23 pixels with 700 weight and the paragraph is going to be 16 pixels with 400 uh, weight. Then we have four colors. Uh, the orange one is going to be accent one. And then we have the main color, um, the background color, and we also have a slight grayish color other than white. I put a shadow um, beside it because you were not able to see it if I uh, removed it. So yeah, with this in mind, let's uh, let's actually start by creating the global styling first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new page. I'm gonna call it home. And on the right side, you wanna select template, full width, and we're gonna publish it immediately. And we're gonna edit it with Elementor. All right, so um, now we want to add in the global uh, the global styling so we don't have to actually uh, set everything up again. So if we drag in a new heading and it's an H1 or an H2, we don't want to um, move the styling around too much. So we're going to set it up once so we can keep using it throughout the entire, uh, entire build of the website. So basically what you do is you click on the three, uh, on the hamburger menu at the top here and you click on, um, let me see, site settings. Yeah, site settings. And then you see global fonts, global colors, typography. For now, we are gonna click on typography because that is the very first thing that we want to do. All right, so I'm gonna small this image and put it on the left so I can see it here. And let's see the H1 color. The color is actually uh, two, 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 two. So six times two, that's color. And the typography is going to be work sans. The size is going to be 60 pixels. And the, let's see, the weight is going to be 700 as we just said it. All right, then we have the H2. That's also going to be hashtag 222222. Now I want to add this as a global color. So I'm going to click on the plus and I'm going to add in, what should we call it? Dark uh, black. And black is always dark, but you know, lighter black. That's what we're going to use it. No, black main. Let's just call it like that. Create. All right, let's see. This is also work sans. The size is 43 pixels and the weight is 600. So semi bold. All right. And then we have H3, which we're going to use for the subheading. Now we can click on the global uh, icon here and we can say black main and uh, typography. We can select now uh, work sans as well. We can say that this is the subheading, right? So it's 23 pixels by 700 width weight, I should say. Okay. And then we scroll up because we also see body and body is the paragraph one, which we need. So I'm going to select the black main and then I'm going to say here, this is going to be a work sans as well. It's going to be 16 pixels and the weight is going to be 400. Cool. Let's update this. And our changes have been updated. So now we can go back and we can click on the global fonts. So we have primary, secondary, text and accent. So primary and secondary, I'm going to use, um, let me see, primary is going to be also this heading one. So I'm also going to say work sans. 
and I'm gonna say it's let's say 60 by 700 now you know what I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna just add a new one so custom fonts that's what we're gonna gonna call it we're gonna call this heading one and it's gonna be work sans 60 by 700 all right let's add a new one sub heading two work sans I'm showing you both ways in order to achieve global uh, font uh, setup, by the way. So you can do it in either two ways. Uh, I'm just so showing you how you can do uh, both of them. The size is going to be 43, 600. Let's add another one. Sub heading. Um, also work sounds. That's 23 by 700. Amazing. And then we're gonna have P. I'm just gonna call it P for paragraph. Work sounds. Um, let's see, 16 by, no, 16 by 400. All right, great. So now we've set up our uh, basic fonts so we set up uh, the fonts the, the, the size the width the color everything for that but still there are three other colors that we didn't add to our global styling so let's quickly add those and then we're good to start with building our website so global colors you can see that the accent has been added right now i'm going to leave the default for what it is um, or the black main i mean i mean that's added i'm going to leave the default ones for what it is so i'm going to add a color uh, I'm going to call it orange and let me see orange is EB 592D. I'm also going to add a light gray um, that's hashtag 7.7.7. And I'm also gonna add the accent black, which is the one we're not gonna use that often, but we still need to have it. So that's hashtag 15171B. I'm really bad with giving names, so uh, you've probably already seen it, but uh, let's not waste too much attention here. All right, great. So now we've set up the global um, styling, we've set up the global um, fonting. So now what do we want to do first? First of all, we want to create the header because we're going to work from top to middle to bottom. So uh, how do we build this? Elementor has a really nifty yeah, built-in tool basically. So I'm going to click on exit here and it's going to ask me where this needs to exit to. So you can either say to this post or to the WB dashboard. I'm gonna say WB dashboard because we're gonna skip through the website quite a lot. All right, so we're back in the dashboard. So how do we create a header? Well, I know that I want to build a header, but we also need to have a navigation menu. And for this navigation menu, we also need pages. So the very first step that comes in mind for me is to create these pages. So let's go ahead and build or create these pages. So we already added a home page where we didn't do that much. Um, what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna say the contact page. I'm already saying that it's an Elementor full width. Add new and we're gonna say a services page. All right. And I'm gonna say a about us page. That looks ugly. Let's do it like this about us. Also, I'll enter full width and publish. Cool. So let's create uh, the menu, the menu bar actually itself. So, what we need to do is we need to go to appearance and then we click on menus. And before you can add things to the menu, you need to create the menu. So, we're gonna type in menu name, it's gonna be uh, menu top. 
or header menu. That's what I'm going to call it. Because um, the naming of this is quite important because it might be the case that you have multiple uh, menus and then you know which one you use and which places. So let's add the homepage, the contact, the services and the about us. There we go. Only you can see that the order is not correct. So what do I want to do? I want to grab the home, then I want to have service, then I want to have about and then I want to have contact. So I'm going to save this menu and that's great. But the problem is if we click on visit site, we're not going to go to the home page. We're going to go to the some archive page. So let's set up that the home page is actually the home page. So we're going to go to settings and then to reading. And then you can see your home page displays and you select a static page and then you select home from here. And you save these changes. While we are here, you want to make sure that your permalinks are set to post name and save these changes as well. All right, cool. So let's start building our header. What do we do for this? We're going to click on templates or I'm going to click on add new template. And here you can choose the type that you want to create. And you can see we have a whole bunch of them and the new ones are the loop item. Um, that's a new feature of uh, Elementor that just has been released. But for now, let's click on header. And what I would recommend naming is I wouldn't recommend using a version for this because if you use a version, you have to keep renaming the header or keep duplicating the header and renaming it. So just name it header of um, barber shop. That's, uh, that's what I'm going to call it, header of barber shop. And we're going to create this template. Now, because I have Elementor Pro installed, it's going to ask me to use a couple of blocks. You know, you, you can you can just import these blocks, but it's going to import our media as well. And we don't want to have that. I want to build from scratch. So I'm going to remove it here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the plus and then you want to select your three uh, section or your three column section. Right. Then you click on structure on the left hand side. And you want to make sure it's a 2550, 25 one. If you click on that, you can see that the middle is a bit bigger and then you have left and right. The reason for this is we're going to drag in the logo on the left side, the menu in the middle, and then we're going to have a button for um, uh, booking an appointment on the right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in an image and select my logo from uh, the library, which is right here. Now I cannot see anything right now because our wallpaper or our background is white as well. So I'm going to leave this for now as it is, but I'm first going to drag in all of our elements. All right. So I'm going to drag in the nav menu right here. It's on the left hand side, nav menu. And as you can see, it automatically picks up a header menu for us. And that's amazing. But some things are not right. Uh, it sees this as links and we didn't set up the links. So for now, I'm going to make the background of the header black so we can actually see what we are doing. There we go. That's much better. So um, for now, let's just add a button. Lastly, there you go. Add it on the right and maybe put it on the right hand side as well and i'm gonna make it large yeah large is fine all right so what are we gonna do let's do some styling here um because first of all we're gonna work in the middle part so i'm gonna leave this for as it is i'm gonna click on styling and you can see it picked the primary uh, I don't want that. You can pick all the things you want. Um, let's just see what fits. Subheading perhaps. Subheading kind of works. Um, let's just say 600, right? like this. Um, let's make the text color white. And when we hover over it, we can see that uh, it turns green. 
and we don't want that. So hover, I'm going to say the text color all white as well. Um, right. But let's make the pointer color actually the orange. And now it just kind of spawns. But what I want to have is that it kind of slides. So um, let's see. Click on content and then we can say the pointer underline animation fade and I want to slide it in. So now it goes like this, which looks a, bit, a little bit cooler in my opinion. Right, really nice. Let's set this to 16 instead of 23. And let's align this in the middle. There we go. The only thing that we want to do is click on style and make sure that active that the text color is white and that the point of color is orange. Otherwise it's going to use the default setting and that's not what you want right here. Now for the button, let's say that this is going to be a work sans. Right. Let's make the color orange. I'll say the border radius is zero. So it becomes kind of, square. The rest is basically fine. Um, so I'm going to say instead of click here, I'm going to say appointment. Because you want to make an appointment. Now I want to have some kind of a hover animation, right? I mean, if you hover over it, it needs to do something. So let's set up a border for this. So I'm going to click on hover. Um, let's see, border type, I'm going to say solid with a width of one and the color of orange. So it always has this border. But if we hover over it, the text is going to be white, but the background is going to be transparent. Well, the border color is going to be orange. So now we get this effect, which is quite cool. Right, let's leave it like that. And let's click on the header, no, on the icon. And I have it on the right, on the left side here, so I can actually see my uh, how big I made it. I made it 70 pixels, not 70 percent. 70 pixels, there you go. All right, let's see what else I missed here. Oh yeah, there you go. Um, if I click on the top the three buttons, or the top three thing, um, dots, we can edit the section. And I want to set the minimal height to, or the height to a minimal height, and let's make this 90. All right, and if I click on the column, I also want to make sure the vert vertical align is middle everywhere, so everything is nice and smooth in the middle. Vertical line, middle. There we go. And that is our header. Now, the only thing I want to do is if I want to make it, it needs to be transparent always, right? And if we scroll, I want to make sure that it, um, uh, that it becomes black. That's, that's what we did uh, in, the, in the introduction as well. So that's what I'm going to do right now as well. So click on edit section and go to advanced and make sure that it's set to pixels and unlink these values and make it um, the bottom minus 90, minus 90. There we go. And let's set the Z index to 50. So it's kind of on the foreground and there's nothing in the way. Now, what I want to do is I want to click on motion effects and make sure that the sticky is to top. Uh, let me peek on the left side here, sticky to top, yeah. And the effects offset is gonna be five. Now the reason for us to do this is because we're gonna implement a little bit of code here. And don't worry, you don't need to know anything about code. The only thing you need is to copy and paste exactly the same code that I'm pasting right here. And I'll put a link in the description as well. All right, so once that is done, we are gonna go and Let's see if everything is working correctly. So uh, the last thing I want to do is just select on the section again, make the style transparent. Uh, there we go. And it should work. So I'm going to publish this. And I was going to say, where do you want your uh, to display your template? I'm going to click on add condition, entire site, and save and close this. 
so now if we exit we go to our website we can see that it's now transparent but we cannot scroll or anything so uh, it stays transparent so let's go to the home page and add a little bit of spacing there so we can see how the uh, header looks like so let me just add in a section and add a oh let's pick up the navigator and let's add a spacer all right and let's put it at 600 or something now let's put it at 1500 so this way we can scroll right and as you can see it's already working if you click on view page if i scroll down you can see that it's transparent so that is exactly what we want and uh, for this the header is finished so now we can actually start working on the home page all right so um we made it to the home page and we just added two more sections so i'm going to remove these sections if you're wondering how I get this little thing right here is I simply right click and click on the navigator. And this way we can select sections if something's in the way, for example, this header right here. All right, so let's create a section. And I actually want a two column section. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna set the height to fit to screen. Because we want to fit the, um, um, the first section to the screen. So let's click on style border type um, we can select a color or anything but we're just going to click on classic and then we're going to use an image and i'm just going to use this math setting right here and now as you can see we kind of see the image a couple of times so what i want to do is i want to say position center center attachment um, let's keep it as it is repeat no repeat but the display size is going to be cover so now it's covering uh, the entire uh, home section which is great but on the other hand it's kind of kind of light you know it's kind of bright so I'm gonna say background overlay and I'm gonna add a darkish overlay with an opacity of 0. Let's do 0.3 no 0. 0.25 maybe yeah that's perfect all right cool so now you can see that we have the first section of this of this page so now we're going to add in a heading and as you can see it kind of has some styling but i'm going to click on h1 style we're going to make it white and then we can say the typography is going to be heading one because that's the typography that we wanted to have and then we're going to say like best let me see best Barber shop best uh, quality and best price. Cool. No, not lowest, uh, not best, but lowest, lowest price. Now there is one thing I noticed, and it's these three are kind of far away from each other. So let's go styling. Let's make sure that the line height is not that much. One is just fine. Okay, now let's add in a text editor to the bottom. We're gonna make this white and the typography is gonna be P. And there we go, that's our font. That's everything, which is amazing. Now let's drag in a button and by the way, we can also do this for a button. Um, right now I didn't do it, but if we want to, we can. Um, but since I've done this a couple of times, I'm gonna really quickly make the appointment button. So we're gonna say large is fine. Um, all right, let's make the border radius zero, the color orange. Okay. I think the typography is a bit big, so. P, yeah, P is fine. Uh, hover, text color, white, background type, color, transparent. Border color, orange. Solid, one, orange. 
There we go. Amazing. All right, so this is what the website looks like for now. Uh, we have the first section done. We need a couple more sections in order to have the homepage done. And then we are gonna go over um, adding some dynamic stuff to the website. All right, so we've done a couple of things in the website already and you know the time is moving up pretty quickly and I'm going trying to go through it as fast as possible, but you can go through uh, the chapters that I've listed in the description in order to move along. So let's go further on creating the homepage. Uh, so that's the, I think the only page that we're going to completely create in order to save up time. Um, but yeah, let's add in a section. And this section is going to have uh, two columns. So we can add a new column. I'm gonna add say minimum height and I'm gonna make the color of the background light gray. All right. Then I wanna shape divider on the bottom with a triangle asymmetrical and I want to flip it like that and make the height a little bit lower, something like this perhaps. And then on this side, I'm gonna add in an inner section and I want to add in two images actually. So uh, first of all, let's add this section to be more like this. That's great. So let's add in an image here and another image here. So we're gonna make a little cool overlay effect. So let's select that image and let's select this guy getting cut image. All right. Um, and now for this intersection, we also want to use a different structure. Basically like this, this is perfect. Okay, great. Um, now let's leave this for as it is. And I'm gonna add in a heading here and that's also gonna be a, and the HTML tag is H2 obviously, but the, uh, let's see, that's subheading two. Now this is subheading one still, and I'm gonna make this the black main. I'm gonna write here about us, about us. I'm gonna add in a divider with the color of orange. I'm gonna set the weight to two and I'm gonna set this to 25%, maybe a bit more, 33% perhaps. And let's make the gap basically zero. All right, then a text section, no, not an intersection, I meant a text editor on the bottom right here with the P and the black main color. I'm gonna leave this as it is. And then we are going to add in an intersection here. And I'm gonna make it like this. And I'm gonna add in a heading. Let's just do 50-50 here. I'm gonna make this a subheading too. Time, time times, no, opened. That's what I'm gonna write, open. Um, and let's add in a P here. Um, so let's see, text editor. P and I wanna write my the times that this shop is open so let's say zero nine till seventeen nine that is absolutely great let's see the vertical line to the middle 
and add a margin like this. That's the minus one, that's fine. Right, so this is great. Now the only thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure that this image is overlay overlapping with this one. First, let's add some padding in the section. So let's click on padding on the section. Let's select EMs. I'm gonna say seven on the top and a seven on the bottom as well to have a little bit of breathing air. On this image, I'm gonna say we're gonna have a border type of solid is gonna be three width, or maybe even 10. You know, 10 is fine. And we're gonna make it white. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm now I'm gonna do a little bit of magic. I'm gonna do responsive. And I'm gonna say, uh, not responsive, I'm gonna say uh, layout. It says position. You wanna do absolute. And then you can drag it a little bit over here to make it uh, overlapping, as you can see. So let's put it at 90 pixels, just like that. Amazing. Overlapping image. This looks really great already. So let's put it a little bit to the right, like this. Yeah, this is what I like. Okay, cool. So that is the second section. Now we only need a couple of more things, uh, such as, let's see, the services that we would like to uh, add to the website. So let's go and do this immediately. Um, this one's gonna be really fast. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create one section with a minimum height. I'm gonna go through over this real quick, so. Um, Let's copy the about us, paste it here, align it to the middle and say our services. Uh, let's grab this divider and paste it here. A little bit bigger, smaller I mean, 7% is fine. Uh, copy this and put it here, put it in the middle perhaps. And we are gonna put a shift enter there. Then an intersection with three columns. And we're gonna add in a call to action. All right, and we're gonna make one call to action and we're gonna duplicate it three times over because it's not that exciting. So let's say content, this is the heading, we're gonna say styling, and this can stay. And we don't want a button, so I'm gonna remove this text. We don't want the ribbon as well. So the graphic element is an icon. I'm gonna say a brush. And it's gonna be stacked, All right? Now let's do a little bit of styling. Uh, the box is fine for now, so let's do content. Uh, I want to do subheading for this one. All right, and the title color, we want to make it black main. And the description color, we want to make it black main. And let's set P for here. Yeah, great. Now the graphical element. Um, Let's see what I have here. All right. Spacing is 12, icon size is 18. Now the primary color is the background, so I'm gonna make this white, and I'm gonna make this orange. And then for the box, we're gonna say, um, let me see. Can I do the background color somewhere here? Light gray. All right, let's copy this three times over. Paste, paste, paste. And let's just say instead of styling, let's say cut. Shh, that's not what I want. 
diamond, no, I don't know, something, uh, scissors, there is no scissors, let's just pick the hand scissors, it's really funny, um, image is gonna be the man sitting, and then we have, this is gonna be a washing, so let's say, um, washing and let's make this water there we go that's another section done let's move on to the pricing section which is going to be really fast as well um, so yeah first of all what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of padding here so we're going to say padding EMs top four, bottom four as well, which is fine. Let's go to this section, minimal height. Um, let's say the style is going to be a image of this. And we are going to say that we're going to do it differently. We're going to make the background overlay with this image because then we can select an opacity. And first of all, I want to set center, center, uh, repeat, no repeat. And then we want to cover this and it becomes really blurry, but that's fine because we're going to make the opacity like really minimal. That it's also almost impossible to see something like this. This is fine. Yeah, let's do it like that. Okay. Let's copy over this element, align it to the left and grab our little divider and paste it underneath here. Put it also on the left. Then I want to grab our text and put it also on the left. There we go. Then I want to add in an inner section because for here we are going to make um, a deviation between men and women. This is going to be subheading, subheading with orange. And we're going to say a man. And I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to say women. All right. And let's make a pricing list. Drag it in here. Wow. This is really large um, let's select the image with this little man um, all right and I'm gonna remove these two uh, the title is gonna be black and let's say P no that's way too big Something like that, 18,600, yeah, that's fine. And uh, let's make the price a P then, because it's a bit too big if you ask me. And description, color is fine, just this a little bit different. Great, and the separator, let's just make it a little bit more like that. Cool. You duplicate this one, two. All right, that's really nice. Let's copy this over to this side. And there we have our pricing indicator. And let's add in some margin. So, or some padding, I mean. So, we have some breathing space. There we go. That's really cool. Let's move over to the specialists. So um, another section, height, minimum height. We're gonna uh, copy in this, and actually we're gonna copy in both of these elements, which you can do by holding control. And I'm gonna say our specialists. 
and add in this tiny bit of text as well. Paste. All right. Let's copy in this entire section. Uh, I can't. Ah, oh shit. I always forget that I cannot copy paste intersections. So let's drag it in here, add a new column. I'm going to copy over this column, copy, paste, and I'm going to remove this, remove this, remove this, and duplicate it three times over. There we go. And just, I don't want that. The only thing I want is to have this background of light gray. And these boxes have to be white, like this. Cool. Let's put in three guys here. That's one, that's two, that's three. Instead of styling, I'm gonna say this is gonna be John Smith, and he is a junior barber. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna make this the color of orange, so the description is gonna be orange. And the box, the height can go a bit, no, not like that. The image can be a bit higher. So let's put it at 350. Yeah, that's amazing. All right, I'm gonna paste these styles over. I'm gonna remove this and instead of styling, I'm gonna say Charles Smith and it's gonna be a, a junior stylist like that. Uh, let's just remove this and duplicate it to this column. And he is going to be Mark Watson, and he is a senior barber. Cool. Another section is finished. Awesome. Now we want to do the last part, which is um, client reviews. So I'm just gonna copy these things over. And I'm gonna paste them in here. I'm gonna say what's our clients say, just like that. And then let's put in a testimonial carousel. Like that, and we're gonna remove them all. And let's do image below. Image stacked. Yeah, image stacked is fine. Okay, cool. And as an image, I'm gonna use my own pretty face. There we go. Um, content, let's just say the text color is black main and this is a P. But it shouldn't be, yeah, it should be like that. That's better. And then for me, for the name, we're gonna make it orange and I'm gonna say Subheading, now I'm gonna say P as well. And then instead of 400, let's make it 600. Awesome. Why am I see you? Right, and let's copy this three times over. And add some spacing to the uh, padding, 
to the section itself. So seven, seven. And there we go. I put 77, that's a bit too much. And there we have our homepage, ladies and gentlemen. So um, let's go ahead and click on view page. And what did we achieve in this section of the video? We made the header and the homepage. So if we scroll down, you can see that it becomes black and uh, yeah, it looks really nice. We made the first uh, hero section. If we go down, we have the image overlay. We have some services. Oh, this needs to be our prices, but it doesn't matter. We have some pricing lists and we have our specialists and we have some client reviews. So in the next section, we are going to talk about the footer. And once we're done with the footer, we're actually going to implement some functionality to this website. So adding some actual services and also adding uh, the functionality to make an appointment with your, um, yeah, with your specialist. So uh, yeah, let's go quickly over to the next section. All right, everyone, welcome to the second chapter. We're gonna take a look at creating the custom post types. So we're going to make the services for the barbers. So uh, we're gonna make one custom post type, which is gonna be a service for now. And then we're gonna duplicate it three times over in order to have multiple services. So we're gonna be taking a look at the different services and we're gonna give it a listing and we're gonna give it a nice styling. Then uh, from there on, we are going to make some, um, uh, some experts who actually work with these services. And finally, we are going to implement the booking functionality. So let's take a look at the specific services first. All right, so I'm uh, looking at the website right now. So I have, um, I'm on the, on the homepage. So let's go to the dashboard. And uh, you should know that Jet Engine is something that you need to have installed on your website in order to make this work. You probably can also do this with uh, custom post types but uh, or with uh, um, custom advanced fields but we're gonna do with jet engine so the very first thing that we need to do is actually define a new post type so we are gonna go over to jet engine and click on post types now as you can see this list is empty so let's create a post type all right, so uh, this can become quite important because we need to think of uh, the post type that we're going to create. I mean, sure, we can make a post type, but what does this post type need? What does the services rely on? What do we do? So let's take a look at how the service is gonna look like in a couple of minutes. All right, so this is the website that I made. Um, it's the website that we're going to create as well. And this is in Dutch, so don't mind this. Uh, but anyway, we see a couple of things. We see a title on the top. We see a background image that we maybe want to be dynamic for every specific service. We have a section with uh, a little bit of a description of what it is. We have a price, we have a length, and we have some materials that we're gonna use, uh, which is basically like a razor. We see three images, then we have some more information and some more information. And at the bottom, we have the ability to actually uh, make an appointment, which we will get in a couple of minutes. For now, we just need to focus on these couple of things. So let's implement this. All right, so um, back to Jet Engine to post types, uh, we're going to create the service post type. So let's start with calling this a service. If we click on tab, we can see that the post type slug is going to be service automatically. Now, what is the slug? The slug is basically the slash uh, service, which is gonna be in the URL. We are not gonna do anything with this. What we are gonna do is we're gonna go to labels. Now, why is the label interesting? Um, whenever we create a new post type, it's gonna show up on the left here. So now we have post, media, pages, comments. Um, the post type that we're gonna make, which is gonna be service, is going to be listed on the left here. So um, that is also what the labels are for. So if I say a singular is a service, 
at new if I press tab right now, it's gonna automatically fill it in. So at new service, at new service, new service, edit service, few service, all services. I had to add an at there. Search for service, parent service, uh, parent service. We can just press tab basically a couple of times and it's going to be filled in automatically, which is fine. Let's scroll down to the advanced settings and we can see that we have supports and it says title and editor and also a menu icon. So first let me do the uh, menu icon and let's change this to maybe like a store, is that a thing? Yeah, a store. And the title, it can stay, but the editor, we don't want the editor. So be sure to remove the editor. All right now we're gonna, we're, we're gonna create the fields, the fields that we just showed you. So let's take a look at the fields that we are going to need to create. The very first field is going to be the name of uh, the service. So I'm gonna say a service, uh, let's say service name. If I press tab, you can see that it automatically fills in the name and ID. I wouldn't mess around too much with this. If we uh, save this post type, don't change this around because it is going to um, destroy the way uh, things work. All right, so what do we want? Uh, do we want a field? Yeah, we want a field and we can use a text. Now we have multiple field types. I'm not gonna go over too much in this, but text is basically just for like one or two lines. Uh, if you wanna use multiple text, you would go for a text area. There's also things like a media, radio, or select, um, but we will see these options in a couple of seconds. Description, yeah, uh, this is basically the description that describes what this does. So I'm gonna, for example, I'm gonna fill in, um, the name of the service and I'll show you where this ends up in a second but if we create this post type then uh, and we want to add a new one it says a description for the service name it's the name of the service field width 100 we're just gonna leave it as it is but I do want to make it required all right that's the first one let's set up the second one uh, as you remember we had the background image so let's say background image. Now this is also going to be a field, but it's going to be uh, media. Value format, we're going to go with media ID. And we can just leave everything as it is. It's required. I'm not going to make it required, but you can do that if you're making it for customers. All right. So what else do we have? We had a short description, short description. So let's do that, tap that out. And the short description is more than just one line, right? We have uh, a little bit of a text area. So I'm gonna fill in text area. I'm gonna leave this as it is. Let's make a new one. We have a price. How much is the service gonna cost? Now this can be a field, but what I would recommend, uh, or it could be a text, I'm sorry, but what I re would recommend is use a number if you want to make it, uh, uh, if you want to make it like abstract. The minimum minimum value is going to be zero because we can go negative, um, but we can do something with the steps value. We can say if we want to have decimals, we can say zero, zero one. So now every time we click on this is also how it's going to display. By the way, if we fill in a price, you're going to have like this thing, you know, the up and down. But if we do zero zero one and then we would click on the up arrow it goes uh, up with one and we're gonna leave this as it is that's it for the price uh, let's move over to the uh, time of service so I'm gonna name this duration uh, duration is also gonna be a number so I'm gonna say number and we are gonna say minimum value is zero, the step value is one, and it's gonna be in minutes. Uh, what else are we gonna have? We are gonna have materials. So we're gonna use, uh, how should I call it? Let's just say equipment. Equipment is maybe a better word for it. Now equipment is just gonna be a text. Let's keep it simple, just a text. 
Now we have the three images that we're displaying. Um, so let's add these in. I'm just gonna say image one. It's gonna be a media with a media ID. So now we have image two. That's also a media media ID. And we have image three, which is also media media ID. Great. Now we have two more um, two more short descriptions. So I'm going to call this extra description. Let me copy this over so I don't have to type it again in a second. Extra description one field and we're going to say text area and let's copy this over to and that is going to be a text area as well and that's it for the custom post type so now if we click on add post type we're going to see on the left hand side here we have a new button it's called services so if we click on services we don't see anything because obviously we don't have any services set up. So let's 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 just start with one service. Let's add one. All right. So I'm going to click on Add New Service, and as you can see, uh, here is the description. By the way, the name of the service, and you can also see the rest that we just uh, implemented. Cool. So let's put in some. Uh, Service. I'm gonna say cut for hair cut for man. I don't know. Maybe you can do this. The background image. We're gonna use a background image, which is going to be which one shall we use? This one. Background image. And for a short description, I'm just gonna go over with some lorem ipsum. So let's go in with lorem ipsum generator. I agree. Let's generate some lorem ipsum. I think this will be fine. And let's just copy it over a couple of times. Like this. I don't know what's happening here, but no matter. Let's just leave it for it is. Price is going to be 25. Um, let's see the duration is going to be one and for this we're just going to use a hair cutter I don't know what the equipment is in English let's just call it a hair cutter and now we get to the images so we click on choose media for the first one I'm going to use this one for the second one I'm going to use this one and for the third one let's use this one all right, and now for the extra description one and two, I'm just gonna copy over this little text. I'm gonna paste it in two more times. Let's publish this. Uh, we didn't add a title, by the way, so let's just copy over service for men. Haircut for men, I mean, update this. And let's also update the slug for man update there you can there you go and as you can see the permalink also has now a slash service slash haircut for man which is amazing now if we go ahead and take a look at it it looks like there is nothing to be found because um yeah there is nothing yet to be found so let's go ahead to the next section and we are actually going to style this service so we're going to make sure it's going to look like what I just showed you, and let me show you, is gonna look like this. This is what we are gonna create in the next section. So uh, one thing I do see, by the way, is that we have a price suffix. I need to, don't need to forget that. But yeah, this is what we're gonna make in the upcoming section. So yeah, let's just uh, go ahead and uh, and see how it uh, how it works. 
All right, so we're down to the next section, which is designing the uh, custom post type page itself. So we're going to make the service uh, page. We're going to style it with Elementor and choose the uh, dynamic fields. And as you can see, I'm constantly switching into new clothes all of a sudden. Um, I have magic powers. No, I'm just kidding. I'm uh, recording this over a couple of days. So that's why I'm constantly changing in, uh, in different clothes. So yeah, without further ado, um, let's take a look at what we're going to create uh, within uh, WordPress and Elementor. All right, so this is the Dutch uh, version that I'm uh, looking at right now. And as you can see, this is what we're going to be creating. So the title, uh, the short description, the pricing, the duration, uh, the equipment with the three images and uh, the small extra um, descriptions and also the booking but we will add this in a later stage to this design so yeah let's get started with this i'm gonna close this off um, and then we are back in the tutorial um, in the tutorial website so the first thing that we need to do is we need to click on templates if we go on templates we can create a new template and what are we going to do here? We can say this is actually a, let me see, archive. Uh, this is a single post. We're gonna save it as a single post and we're gonna name it service. So let's create this template. And as you can see, we already get blocks because WordPress automatically thinks that this is uh, gonna be a blog post which it isn't because it's going to be a really cool service. So I'm gonna click on the settings at the left bottom side here and I'm gonna click on uh, page layout and we're gonna go with Elementor full width. So for now, I'm gonna save the draft and I'm gonna reload the page because now it's applying these changes. So yeah, let's add the first section. So what do we have? We have a hero section with an image and title and a little divider or something below it. So I'm gonna create a one structure or one column section with a minimal height of let's say 600 perhaps. 600, that looks perfectly fine. And let's start with the image. So as you can see, the header is overlapping um, the selection. So I cannot make the selection for the section the selection for a section, so it's pretty weird, but I cannot select this, so uh, now I can, sometimes I can't, but what you can do and what I would recommend for you to do is right click and click on the navigator, click on the section and then it's selected as if you would pick the six dots at the top. Click on style and then we want the background to be the dynamic image of, um, uh, of the service. So click on background type classic and then we can set an image. But you can see in the right side hand, we have a dynamic tag. We can click on this and then we can scroll down where it says chat engine and then it says custom image. So I wanna have a custom image. And if I click on the wrench on the, sec on the left side here and I select field, you can see that I can select a field from my service and I want to select the background image. So now that I have that selected, I do not see any changes. Why is that? Because we need to set the preview. So I'm gonna click on preview settings, uh, preview dynamic content as, and then click service, select all, and just click on apply and review, preview. There we go. Let's save this draft and let's do some magic. So uh, the position, I'm gonna keep it at center, center. The attachment, I'm gonna keep it as, uh, what do I have here? I have default. Repeat, I don't want to repeat, but I do want to cover up this image, as you can see right here. Let's see, that looks perfect. The only thing I want is I want a background overlay over this, so it's a bit more darkened up something like this and then let's put this at 0 0.4 perhaps that is totally fine uh all right so one cool thing that we can do is we can click on advanced and we can click on oh no wait where can i do this uh, scrolling effects on style and background image uh, scrolling effects you can set it to off uh, on and then we can say vertical scroll if we do that we have a little cool 
uh, we get a little cool uh, um, scrolling effect as you can see yeah now you can't see anything but it's there trust me you will see it in a second all right so what's up next let's do the heading and we are gonna make this a let's see heading one uh, with a white color but instead of adding your headline text here, I want to change this up to a dynamic tag. So you can click on the dynamic tag again, scroll down, click on jet engine, and then uh, custom field. And then you can set the field for, let me see, uh, we have service name. And as you can see, it says haircut for man, which is exactly what we want. Um, now let's add the divider in here. So just pick divider, put it in the middle. Let's say this is around 33% maybe. That's a bit much, 25. Um, let's make the color orange and let's make the gap the smallest and the weight three. Is that too much? Yeah, that's too much. Let's put it at two. Awesome, we have that, but still it's a bit too big. Let's just put it to 15%, that's better. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay, cool. What's next? Um, next up we have uh, a short description with the pricing and the equipment and stuff like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in a section with a single column. I'm gonna say a minimum height and let's make the background color the black main no accent black yes accent black that's what i want and let's add in an inner section and in this inner section i want to have a animated headline on the left that says what it is what's it uh now let's just say the best i don't know what to put here i'm just making something up the best experience the best experience that's what we want cool instead of circle i want a underline and click on style let's make the shape orange Bring to front, no, I do want curly edges, or uh, rounded edges, kind of like that. Let's make the headline white. And let's say that this is, wait, let me check on the left side, what I actually have here. I have work sounds 32, work sounds 32, 400. That's what I have on the left. All right, kind of works. If I say uh, left, that means on my left screen. Uh, I'm having an example over there. 400. You know what? I'm gonna put this at 600 because that kind of looks cool, if you ask me. Amazing. Let's align it to the left and let's keep it for this. Now um, I want to sh display this on all of the uh, all of the uh, services. So this is always a static uh, variable as you would name it. Now let's drag in a text editor below there. And let's click on dynamic tag, scroll down, custom field. And I want to say short description. We get a short description and let's select P for this. And the color is going to be, uh, let's keep it a text. Uh, maybe secondary. No, let's keep it a text. Text is fine. All right, great. Uh, align it to the left. And yeah, that's perfect. All right, now on the right, I want to make a pricing list. Let's just move this out of the way. Because we had the price, the duration, and the equipment, remember? So on this side, I'm going to click on price and the price is actually going to be the custom field of price. 
as you can see 25 and now I can set something before so let's make a dollar sign before so now it's always having a dollar sign as a uh, prefix which is amazing now this is always called the price and I don't want any links and I don't want any description or anything I just want to keep it at this. So let's remove these three and let's duplicate this three times over. And instead of price, I want to have the duration. All right, so we have the price uh, list right here. So let's duplicate this three times over. And um, let's see. Instead of price, I want to change this to the duration. And on advance, after, I'm going to say uh, hour. And I'm going to remove the dollar sign. So now it's one hours. And I want to add a space here. So you can actually see one space hours. And price, I'm going to say duration. And we're going to do the same for this. But this is going to be equipment. It doesn't have a prefix or suffix. And this is just going to be equipment. There we go. That's amazing. Now let's do some styling because it is, uh, it's really big. And I don't want that a hair color. I don't even know if that's correct English, by the way. Anyway, let's make the title not white. I'm gonna go to secondary. And let's just have a little cheat on the left. So 18 fun work sons. So this is work sons 18400. Apparently. And I want to do the same with the price. So white work sons 18400. There we go. Um, that is all fine. The only thing is that the spacing is also fine, I guess. Something like this. But the weight is, I'm going to put it at two. That's perfect. All right. So that's amazing for now. The only thing I want is to add a spacer on the top because this needs to be aligned perfectly 60 perhaps 60 is fine as you can see this is aligned perfectly and let's put a little bit of padding on the right here so let's put it at 25 so we have a little bit of breathing air there we go that's amazing all right so What's next? The three images. Uh, just so you can, as you can see, here it is. We have the three images and then we have the description. All right, so let's do that. Uh, how did we do this? I created a intersection as well. So I'm dragging an intersection below here and add three items. Um, let's just put in an image. And let's configure this. So click on the image and click on the dynamic tag, scroll down, custom image, and then you can select image one. And it automatically selects this. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it three times, two times over, and basically just uh, change the uh, custom image. So that's two. And this is going to be three. Uh, where are you there? Three. All right, amazing. And let's add some padding here because this is a little bit too crowded. Uh, on the top, maybe four or something. On the bottom, maybe four as well. That's fine. And let's add some here as well on the bottom. So this becomes a bit more. Yeah, that's better. All right, amazing. The only thing we want uh, that I want is I want to have like the scrolling, um, you know, the scrolling, the vertical scrolling uh, um, effect. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to go over to advanced motion effects, scrolling effects, a vertical scroll, and 
up is fine. See if we scroll down, it goes up, which is cool. But the speed, let's put it at two perhaps, because I don't want it to move too much. And let's do the same here. So motion effects, scrolling effects, vertical two as well, but I want it to start maybe a little bit later. That's fine, 35, now let's put it at 20. And this one at 80, perhaps. Let's see how that works. Uh, no, let me check what I did here. Um, ah, I see. I just did like emotion effects. Uh, I put this one at four. I put this one at three. I put this at 100, 100. And this one probably at four. So uh, motion effects, scrolling effects, vertical scroll, let's put it at four. So now we have three individual. Yes, that's what I want. Three. And then this, should, the last one should be two. Oh, my laptop is, I don't know if you can hear it through the mic, but it's going skyrocketing to the air, man. It's, damn, <laughs> it's booing up. All right, it's making a lot of noise right now. I hope you don't hear it through the mic. So we do have the scrolling effects. And now the last thing that we need to do is add in uh, the intersection with the two short descriptions. So let's go in and drag in another intersection below this one and add in a text editor. And I'm gonna copy over this style and paste it here. So paste style. And I'm just gonna say, where is it? Dynamic tag, custom field, uh, short description one. And I'm just gonna copy over this to this side, paste. And I'm gonna put this one at extra description two. And there we have it. That's the specific, uh, specific service. Now I'm going to leave out the booking functionality for now, because I do have to add that in a later stage for now. We're just going to keep it at this. So, um, I'm going to show you how to apply it now to all of your services so that if you add multiple services in the future, that it will automatically have the specific styling. So basically what you do is you click on publish, add a condition, Click on, let me see, click on, instead of all singular, you want to click on service and then service, and then it says all. And this applies to all of the services. So we're going to apply this to all of the services. So click on save and close. Now, if we exit and we go towards one of our services, here it goes from man and I click on view. All right, so if you now have your service and you click on view, you can see that it has been added. So now it says men's haircuts, the best experience with the text that we set up, the price, 25, one hour, and the hair cutter equipment, the three images, and also we have our text, which is amazing. Uh, sometimes it happens that you get a 404. It happened to me, so I had to pause the video and cut a couple of times, but um, I look, looked it up. And basically what you need to do is you need to switch from uh, whatever your permalink structure is under settings permalinks. Just select something. I recommend clicking plain and then click back on post name and click save changes and then uh, it will work. So yeah, that was that for this episode. So that was this section. Uh, we styled the custom post type. We start. Uh, we styled the the service. Uh, in the next section, we are going to taking a look at the overall services. So we have uh, the page in the navbar. It's our services, so we can list out all of the services in a nice way. And then we're finally going to be starting on the appointment. So um, that means that we have to set up the uh, specialists uh, or the experts and we can hook them up to a certain appointment timestamp. So it's gonna be a longer section. This was a longer section as well, but it's almost finished. That's one of the last things we have to do. And then, uh, yeah, we're uh, finished. 
So let's quickly move over to um, to the next section and maybe I'll have to do another clothing uh, change because it's another day of recording for me, but yeah. Uh, let's, uh, let's go to the next section. All right, welcome to the next section. Uh, we're going to take a look at creating the specialist for the services or the employees for the services. That's just the way of naming it as you want. And along with making these uh, employees or specialists, we are also going to be implementing the back end of the appointment system. So we can actually add appointments and we can set a, a specific service with a specific employee or specialist. So we can uh, make a connection with these two. And uh, I'm going to show you how to do that in this section. So uh, yeah, let's give it a go. So as you see uh, in the back end, I've added multiple services. So we have styling, we have coloring, and we have man's haircut right now. Um, yeah, basically they're not really too much to it. This is the styling one. Just added some images and a pricing. The coloring, I did the same. Images, pricing, and the same goes for the man's haircut. You know, nothing too special. But let's create these specialists. So what do we do is we need to create a new custom post type within Jet Engine. So we're gonna go to Jet Engine, post type, and we're going to add a new one. Now we need to think of the name that we are going to give this. Is it gonna be employee or is it gonna be specialist? I'm gonna call it specialist for now. So I'm gonna say specialist. I'm gonna hit tab and I'm gonna leave this empty and empty. So for labels, I'm gonna write specialist and I'm just gonna tap all of these out as we have been doing before. And then in the advanced setting, I wanna scroll down and remove the editor. And I'm gonna change the icon to, uh, let's say a user or do we have like a scissors or something? No, knife, no, let's, let's go ahead and pick this one, this user with a tie or something, I believe it is. All right, and for the meta field, we are going to be naming this, um, well, let's take a look, uh, the name of the specialist. So I'm just gonna say name, it's gonna be name, field, text, that's fine. And it is required. And then we're gonna say, I want a description of this guy as well. And that's a text area. And it is not required. And then I want to say an image as well. So I'm gonna say uh, profile, and I'm gonna call this avatar because it's an avatar image. And instead of feel, uh, instead of text, I wanna say, let's see where it is. Uh, media, media ID, not URL. And we do wanna make this required. So for now, this is perfectly fine and we're going to add this post type. So now I want to add multiple specialists because as you can see here is the new specialist tab. So I'm gonna add three specialists and let's see what I'm gonna call these guys. Uh, I have the screen on the left hand side. So first we're gonna create Mark Watson. So Mark Watson, copy that over. Um, and let's do some Lauren Ibsen text here and we're gonna use, let's see, this guy from Mark Watson. All right, let's publish. There we go, specialist Mark Watson. Now, if we click on it, the page is not found, it's not working, um, but it is not necessary because we're not gonna make a specific uh, page for Mark Watson. If you want to do that, you can just go ahead and take a look back at how we made the services. It's exactly the same process. Um, so let's go back and let's say, uh, add new specialist. I'm gonna call this one Charles Smith. Charles Smith, there we go. Let's put in some Lorem Ipsum. Uh, Let's copy this over and put it there. Uh, you, this guy is Charles Smith. Publish. And then I also want a guy named Andrew Wolf. 
paste that in, paste that in, and then this is Andrew Wolf. Cool, so we have our specialists. We have three specialists that we want to add in the website. So now let's set up the JET appointments. So how do we do this? It may sound quite difficult or quite intense, but really it's a really simple process. All you have to do is go over to JET appointments on uh, yeah down below and you click on set up. Now it's gonna ask you for the services post type. So we're gonna scroll down and select service. Then they're gonna uh, ask you if you want to add providers. We do, and these providers are our specialists. So we're gonna click on next, and then it's going to create these um, database columns for us. So you have ID, group ID, status, service provider, blah, 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 all kinds of things. So um, what we want to do, uh, so let me see, I added some custom, um, custom fields as well. Uh, let me see on the left hand side here where it is. Um, there we go, yeah. What I did is I added a new column and I named this one name. But we can also do phone number, let's do phone because we already have a user ID and a user name. So let's add a phone. Click on next. And now it's gonna ask the booking schedule, the time format that we want to use. Uh, I'm in Europe, so I'm gonna use Europe time. Then the scheduled time, you can use slot, time picker, or recurring. I'm gonna go for time slots. The uh, duration normally is, let's say in half an hour is quite fine. And then we can say a buffer time before and a buffer time after. So basically what this is, is it's a, a kind of a margin between your services. So let's say you have an appointment at 11 in the morning and it's finished on 11.30, you can say that you wanna have 15 minutes in between for your next appointment. So you always have 15 minutes of, uh, yeah, of margin uh, in between your services. So uh, let's do that. Let's say 15 minutes before and also 15 minutes after. It also says the appointment cannot be made if there is less than this time left. Uh, we're gonna leave this at blank. Multi-booking, the client can book several appointments at different times at different days. Uh, we can do that, but for um, simplicity reasons, I'm not gonna do this, I'm just gonna keep it off. Uh, the work hours, so it's from eight till five every day, except for Saturday and Sunday, because then the shop is closed. That's fine for me. You can also add some days off, for example, the holidays, you can add them here, so Christmas or something like that. Um, and you can make a, a custom sh a schedule with your working days. I'm not gonna do that because this is perfectly fine. Let's click on next. And then we have the option to select a WooCommerce integration. So basically what we can do is we can create a checkout. So if I would book an appointment with my specialist, I need to pay online with WooCommerce in order to complete this booking. Um, for this example, we're creating a, a barber shop. So typically what I do with my um, hair dresser, barber shop, whatever you wanna call it, is I book online, I uh, receive an email that it has been accepted and then I need to go there. I do, uh, they do the thing on my hair, they cut my hair and then I need to pay. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do here. So for now, I'm gonna skip the WooCommerce integration because I just want to um, uh, allow uh, someone to make an appointment and receive an email based on this appointment. Create a single service booking form. Create a booking form for a single service page without services, select field, chat forms, for, yeah, we're gonna uh, enable this. Create a uh, sample page booking form, we're also going to enable these. And then we can select where we want to create the forms in, the Jet Form Builder or the Jet Engine Forms. I'm gonna use Jet Engine Forms because that is uh, the easiest for this tutorial. So let's click on Finish and then you get an overview of everything that we've done. So the post type is Manage Services, uh, WooCommerce integration, we don't have that and we're going to have two forms. So one is for a single service and one is for a static page. Um, 
basically what this means. Uh, let, let's explain a little bit about these forms. The single service booking form, so the first one, that's the one that we're going to be adding on the single service itself. While the static page booking form is something that you can, for example, put in the home page or the um, book an appointment page or something like that. All right, that's great. Now we can go to plugin settings and we can see everything that we have. So uh, if we click on settings, we see that we have, uh, let me see, all of our things that we set up are here, which is great. Um, services post type, I don't know if it saved this by the way, so I have to redo this specialists, all right? That's great. So let's go to appointments and settings and see if it's set up. Yeah, now it's set up. All right, that's great. So we've done the backend for the chat appointments. Now um, that's it for this section. In the next section, we are going to be looking at implementing the front end of this uh, implementation. So it's really not that hard. It may look kind of hard, but if you just follow along, it'll be really easy. And that will also be almost the end of this course. I'm not sure yet. Maybe we're going to add in a footer, but we'll see along. So uh, stick around for the next section where we are going to be taking a look at implementing this on the front end and seeing what the appointments actually look like. Uh, before we can go and um, work on the front end, we still need to set up the form first, which is going to be the uh, actual uh, yeah, form where you were able to select the time slot, select your um, specialist, select your service. And uh, we need to also set up what happens uh, whenever you make an appointment. So let's do that first. So what you have to do is you have to go over to Jet Engine and you click on forms at the section down below. And then remember we um, generated those two forms that were, you know, generated automatically. Um, we're going to edit these right now. So the single service booking form is the one we're going to do first. So as you can see, we have a couple of field settings and we have some properties that we can fill in. Um, for now, the service ID uh, is fine. The user email provider ID, stuff like that, we're gonna change this up a little bit. So we're wanna, we wanna start with the service ID. Next, I want to have the provider ID. So we have to select the one that we want to use. Then we're going to add in a page break because it needs to be a uh, multi-step. So first you select your provider, then you select your time slot, then you validate, stuff like that. So that's what the page break does. It basically makes a new uh, step in the form. That's what it does. So uh, we're gonna use provider ID, page break. And then we're also gonna say uh, the appointment date first and then we want to add the name so we're gonna say add field and we're gonna edit this up so I have it on the uh, on the left side as well so I'm gonna take a little peek there so the f name is or the name is name and the label is name and it is required and that is it. So we're gonna apply the changes. So let's take a look. So we have appointment date, page break appointment date, then we wanna have the name. Then we wanna have the user email. And then we actually, we could add in a phone number. So let's take a look if we actually set up the phone number. So let's go to I believe it's advanced workflows integrations layout labels tools tools yeah we have phone uh, we also want to add in a name and that's it phone and name that's what we want to have save and update appointment okay that's great. So let's go back into a uh, single form. Let's update this and reload this page actually. So uh, we can add the phone. So now we have the name and then we have the user email and then we want to add in the phone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, 
where is it our field name uh, let's edit this it's gonna be a number so where it is number and it's gonna be called phone and we're gonna say as a label phone a number and it's also required so that we is uh, let's say if a customer is late or anything or doesn't show up you can always call him on his phone uh so phone we're gonna add this below the user email and then we're gonna have a new uh, new field because we want to know what the total price is going to be right we want to make a calculated field so we're gonna click on calculate it and we're gonna say dash total and uh, labels not gonna matter but as you can see we have a couple of fields that we can use in order to generate the total price so how are we going to do this really easy or really easy we're gonna say percentage because that is uh, how to define a, a field and then we're gonna type field with capital letters and then we're gonna say uh, this this so it's not the semicolon, but it's the like, you know, the double dotted thing. You need to put that twice. And then we're gonna say appointment date. But I'm just gonna, you know, you can also copy it from here. So appointment date. So like that. And then we're gonna say times one. That's what we want to calculate because we want to have the appointment date times one. Then we want to say the um, decimal place is two. The prefix is going to be total. And then we're going to say dollar sign. That's not a dollar sign. Where is it? There it is, dollar sign. And let's say the default is always zero. And we want to apply these changes. Total. Um, let's put it there. And then we have the book now button which is just a button that says book now, uh, which is completely fine. So uh, let's cancel this out. And then we can go down and we can um, actually do some really cool stuff as in here as well. So uh, first of all, insert appointment. What does this do? It's basically just going to insert the appointment with all of the data. So uh, we can see that the type is insert appointment, service ID field is service ID, provider ID field is provider ID, the date is the date, the user email is the user email. Now the user um, name field, we can just say a user name, the phone field is the phone, and for the name, we're also gonna use the name. So we're gonna apply these changes. Next, we're gonna add a notification because we want to send an email towards uh, the client and towards the uh, business as well. So let's do send email and uh, email to. We want to say email from submitted form field because we want to send it as a validation towards your customer. And then from field is going to be user email. Reply to is not selected. And then the subject is. Um, Let's say uh, appointment accepted. Let's do something like that. From name, and that could be your business name, so I'm gonna call it tutorial. Uh, tutorials, tutorial shop, something like that. And the from email address is going to be the address that you want to send your email from. So I'm gonna put in my business email that you can also always use to send me uh, uh, questions or anything. All right, so now we can set the content of the email and we can also use these available macros in order to do some dynamic stuff. So let's do that basically. Let's just go ahead and do it. So we're gonna say hello and then the name. So let's select that hello name. Um, Thanks for booking, or thanks for booking an appointment with us. We hope you will enjoy our service and we are looking 
no, just we hope you will enjoy our service. That. Uh, and then we're gonna say, we accept your uh, appointment on. And then we're going to say appointment instead of appointment date, we can say appointment start. Uh, let's see. Is it somewhere over here? No, it's not here, but appointment starts. Basically what it does is it just shows whenever the appointment is starting. Um, so it's a day and the, um, um, what's it called? The appointment start is the date where it starts and also the time. So in order to do that, we need to set up a format. So I'm gonna use this. Oh. Let's put a stripe and then we're gonna say format and date. This is something you can skip, by the way, if you don't really like this. Uh, I can imagine this is a bit hard for you, or not hard for you, but it's just uh, confusing in general. Um, basically, these are just macros that you can use. Where's my dollar sign? Uh, percentage, there we go. Basically, what we did is, um, yeah, we just say, uh, we start the appointment on uh, this day and time and then with the date format that we want to display it on so this is just generic you can also google this uh, you see if i google this let's just go ahead and do it uh, you can see whatever we get um, customizing the time and date format within wordpress and here you can see what it's going to be looking like so the format string this generates this so yeah that's just basic basic formatting all right, and then we're gonna say, you are being helped, being helped by, and then we're gonna say the provider ID. Mm, or maybe the provider, yeah, let's just do provider ID. No, provider title because it says the name of the appointment provider. That's what I want to do. Provider title. And then we're going to say, so this is what you booked. Let's just do it really, really fast. This is what you've booked. Really good English also. Um, and then we can just say service title. Where is it? Service title. I cannot find it, but we can say service title. There you go. And you will have to pay. And then we're going to say a dollar sign and percentage. Then we're going to say total at the end of the service. See you soon. That's the email that we're gonna send. So let's apply these changes and let's send another one, which is going to be sent towards the business. So uh, you can just follow along here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edit this. I'm gonna say send email, admin email, uh, because we want to send this to the admin email of the WordPress environment. Uh, we're gonna use this, it's not selected. And then we're gonna say a new, Appointment as subject from, uh, let's just say a tutorial, tutorial shop, because that's where the email comes from. Content type, we're gonna say plain text again, and then we're gonna say new appointment. Name is going to be name date is going to be I'm going to copy this over from our left screen here because that's the same as we just had that's the date then the specialist is going to be the specialist the provider tile there you go the 
service is going to be the service title. Uh, service title. Then we're going to have uh, amounts to pay. And we're going to say dollar sign and then total. And then we can also add in some data of the customer. So customer data might be useful as well. So we're going to say email is email is the user email. And the phone number is going to be phone. There we go. Let's apply these changes and that's that for the emails and for this all. So now the only thing we can do is set up some messages, settings, for example, forms successfully submitted. That's not what we're gonna do. We're gonna say, thanks, your appointment has been received. Re Received. Uh, stuff like that. Oh. And then you know you get you get the, uh, the 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 thing here. Submit failed would be something like um, an error occurred while um, setting your appointments. Please try again or something like that. You know, you get the point. You can do that for all of these if you want. They're not all that relevant, but yeah, that's it. That was a bit of a vague uh, section, perhaps. It was kind of difficult, but it's, you know, it's taking a lot of time to explain all of the macros. So uh, I don't want to go too deep into this because this the course is getting too long already. Um, but yeah, you can just follow along and um, then you will see what happens, you know, if you uh, set up the email in plain text and you want to uh, change it around a bit, just book appointments later on, you will receive the emails and you can test it out and, and change some macros around and Google some other macros. There is a lot of them out there, but the basic ones are always listed on the, on the left and on the right side. So uh, now that we have that done, um, we are going to implement this on the front end and we still need to go back towards the uh, static page booking form, uh, but it's generally just the same process. So we can just copy paste it over from the first one, from the single service one. But yeah, let's uh, go ahead and implement this on the front end. Welcome to the next section. In this section, we're going to be implementing everything that we've just done in the back end into the front end using Elementor and Jet Forms. And yet again, I changed into some new clothes. I really am a magician. I don't know how I'm doing it. It just happens like this. Anyway, let's go and take a look at how to actually implement everything into the front end. And there are multiple ways and I'm going to show you all of these ways. So let's jump straight into the PC and see what we have to work at. All right, so last time we worked on the forms. Uh, basically what I've done is in the forms, I have the single and the static. I don't know if I showed you uh, the single one but uh, or the static one, but basically I duplicated these over. The only thing that I did is I added some more page breaks in order to break it down. But in the end, it's exactly the same form. So don't worry too much about this. Um, for now, let's go and implement it in our service. So let's choose a service. I'm going to go for styling and let's go to the service and actually edit it with Elementor. All right, so what we're gonna do is we want to add this, the, the appointment to the bottom of this section. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new section with one column and give it a minimal height. The very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a menu anchor. And this menu anchor is going to be, uh, let's call this appointment, because later on, if we press this button, if we are on this page, we want to go to this bottom section. Okay, 
uh, that's cool. So let's add in our heading. So I'm gonna drag in a heading. I'm gonna put it in the middle and let's say book an appointment. Now this is a little too big for my taste. So I'm gonna make this black, but let's do a subheading perhaps. Yeah, let's just make the weight a little bit bigger. 800 is maybe a bit too big. Let's put it at 700. Perfect. All right, book an appointment. And then I also want to have a text editor with, of course, our P text. There we go. And I'm gonna write some random stuff down and I'm just gonna look at my left screen because I already set it up there once, but I'm just gonna translate it to English what I wrote down here. Um, this is where a customer is able. Oh, wait, uh, let's do something else. Thanks for, um, thanks for your interest in our services. Let's just copy over some lorem ipsum. No, I can't. Uh, let's just do lorem ipsum generator. It's easier than writing some random stuff down, I think. Uh, let's just do this. Lorem ipsum generator, you are my best friend. Boom, there we go. And let's throw in a shift enter here. So we have something like this, but I'm gonna put it right over there. Perfect. All right, and for now, now comes the speciality where we all have been waiting for because this is where the magic happens. We're gonna write down form. And as you can see, we have a couple of options, but you wanna select the form that has this little icon right here. Possibly it's green for you, possibly it's white or blue for you, go for this icon. Um, it's the form that goes with um, Jet Engine. So select form. What you want to write down here is we are on a specific uh, service right now. We are looking at a specific service uh, page. So what we're going to do is we don't want to have the static, but we want to have the single service. So I'm going to write down the single service booking form. And there we go. We get our booking. For now, what I want to do is I want to set Ajax on here because I don't want to hot reload my submit type. I want to select Ajax and I am going to take a look at my left side here in order to make sure that I'm not messing anything up. Ajax is fine. Let's go ahead and take a little look into the styling. So the labels, uh, let's do that first. So we're going to say this is going to be Word Sans, obviously. So it's going to be 16 and we're going to set a weight of 500. Great. Uh, the color is fine as it is. All right, the description sets fine as it is as well. Um, let's just scroll down to, uh, to the fields. And then we want to set for the fields typography, I'm going to select works on swell. I'm going to put it at 14. That's going to be 300 light. Amazing. Okay, what else can we do? Um, maybe the edges of the input field, because this is black and it's, it's not really uh, what I want. So we're going to go for the border type is going to be a solid and we're going to make it of one width. And then there is a color that I already used on my other website, but for you, it's E B E C E D. That's the one you want to use if you want to follow along with my styling. Let's set the border radius to zero because we want this to be all squared up. All right. That's great. Um, let's go over to, uh, Checkboxes, we don't have checkboxes. We do have calculated fields, but uh, that's not really what we wanna go for. So let me check on the left side here, what we have. Uh, there is a lot of stuff that I didn't do, but all right, we can skip all of this, but what we do wanna do is go to the appointment calendar 
because here we want to do a couple of things. The calendar width is going to be 100. And for the padding, I'm going to set this to 25 on the top, 20 on the right, 25 on the bottom, and 20 on the left. Uh, I've already done this, so you can just also use my, uh, my padding offsets um, if you're not sure what this is. But this is actually the point where you are able to select your time slot. Uh, so right now you're not able to see it, obviously. Um, what we can do is I can publish this. And then we can actually see what we're doing, perhaps. So let's go ahead and view our services. Oh, we didn't do the services yet. Um, so we need to select a specific service. Scroll down. Here's the appointment. So right now, Ah, oh, yeah, we still need to set this up. All right, that's something we're gonna do. You know what? We're gonna do that right now. So you wanna go to your dashboard and you wanna click on a service. Let's click styling. And if you scroll down, you can now see that there is a price per slot, price per slot, tan. Um, and we can set use custom schedule as well. What we wanna do is we wanna go to the top that says related specialist. So for now, uh, I don't know the names of the specialists anymore. So let's take a look. We said Andrew Wolf, that's our first. So I'm just gonna put in Andrew Wolf, but I want actually everyone to be able to do this. So I'm gonna click specialists. And we have Charles Smith as well. So Charles Smith and who do we have? Mark Watson, Mark Watson, there you go. So let's update this. Let's take a little peek. Um, and now we can select our people so let's click on next and oh this is not what we want obviously um why is this happening it is happening because we made an intersection here so let me just go over and do this fix this up real quick so this is an intersection with the just one column and i'm gonna drag this into the intersection and then in the intersection itself I want to put this on EMs and then I'm gonna say it's gonna have 20 on the right, 20 on the left, but also 20 on the bottom. So it looks like this. All right, maybe that's gonna clear some things up. Let's take a look. No, it's definitely not doing anything. All right, so let's just keep on styling the uh not the rows but we're on the appointment calendar right that's where we were so let's just take a look here appointment calendar there we are ah it's 100 this needs to be a hundred percent so let's put this at a hundred and now it should be fixed i believe yeah there we go there we go, that looks better. And as you can see now, if I click a time, you can already see the time slots, but I want to make sure that you are actually able to see which time slot that you are selecting. So that's what we are doing right now in the appointment calendar. So let's set up a box shadow. And I already have my colors here, so I'm just gonna select this. It's 000, zero and then 0 0.07. And then let's put this at 20 and let's put the spread at 10. So basically what that does is it enables us to have a little cool shadow on, uh, you see, on the calendar itself, which is really cool. All right, next up, the typography. We do want to change this. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, I like the font way, uh, the font size. So I'm just gonna go with work sans and put the weight at um, 600 perhaps for the calendar. Uh, let's see what this looks like. Uh, there we go. Yeah, that's, 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 that's fine, I guess. Looks, looks great. All right. 
Uh, okay, and let's go to the weekdays, week names. And I also want to make sure that this is, wait, maybe we can, yeah, we can start like this as well. That's great. I didn't know that. Typography. Let's go for work sans. So now we're looking at the very top here. Work sans. We'll put this at 12. And I'm going to say this is 500. So like that. And I do want to make this uppercase. So it looks a bit more interesting. Uh, let's see what else we have. Oh yeah, here we go to the weekdays and the uh, dates. That's cool. This is where we are going to have some cool things. But I do want to add this to the names, the color 959595. Now it becomes a little bit of unselected. And um, wait. That's not true. I want this to be like that. And I'm going to reverse this. Okay, so now what I want to do is make sure that the hover color is the orange, the active color is the orange, and the today color is the orange. Now for the vertical gap, I'm going to put five. And now we're going to have the time slots. So let's select one. And as you can see, these are the time slots and nothing is happening. So I want to add some cool things. So let's put it at the typography at work sans. And I'm gonna put 12, is that too small? I don't know. Maybe there is a lot of time slots here. So let's just keep it at 12 for now. Uh, let's put the padding at three. Sure, that looks fine. Um, all right, now we're gonna put the border type on solid. Hold it. that looks weird. And remember the E3, E3, E4 that we had? I'm gonna go over and paste that color as this color. That doesn't seem right, so let's revert that change and let's put it on the correct place, which is here. That's better. But then I want the, uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, slots active. Let's do the border color to orange. There we go. Uh, yeah, that's perfect. That's what we want. That looks a bit better. All right, my keyboard is spacing out. Uh, let's go ahead and see what else we have. So we have the submit. Oh yeah, the buttons. Obviously, we want to have the buttons. So let's go to the submit button and let's set the background type to orange. Let's make the text color white. Let's go ahead and put this at works. Oh, my keyboard is not working. One second, got to pause the video. All right, didn't know what happened there, but my keyboard is back. Um, let's put this at work sounds. That looks really cool. Let's set the border type to none. Uh, Let's put the border radius at zero. Wait, I do want to have like a hover effect, you know? So let's put actually a border type to solid. Let's put it at one and set the color for orange. And then on the submit, if we hover over it, the background should be, let's make it transparent. And let's make the text color orange and the border color orange. Yeah, exactly. That looks great. Um, for the next page, I actually want to do the exact same thing. So yeah, let's just, let's just do that. 
matrix color all white. Let's put this at work sans, uh, border type solid with one color orange. Hover background color is going to be transparent. Text color is going to be orange and border color orange. Amazing. Border radius is zero. Damn, we also have to do it for the previous button. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, let's, let's, let's do that then. Um, whites. Let's put the typography at work sans. Let's say that border type solid with one width of the color orange with no border radius. And let's set the background color to the transparent if we hover over it because the text and the border is both orange. That should do it. All right. And for the messages, that's these messages. Let's just also put this by default at work sans. Let's say I don't want to have a border type. Uh, the, I do want to have a text color and just want going to make it black. Um, and I'm also going to put it at black for the error, um, error things as well. All right, let's update it. I think that's about it. So let's go ahead and refresh this page. Um, so now we are on the styling page. So let's take a look. If we want to book an appointment, we can select our provider. We can click on next. Then we can say, I want to put it on the 16th of March at this time. Then you get your appointment details with the styling. This is your date. And let's actually see what happens if we activate this, uh, if we put this in. So I'm going to put in my name is Yoop. My email, I'm going to put a, um, let's just put a test at test.com. And let's put in a phone number, so zero six, that's because I'm Dutch. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh shit. Four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. And let's put, oh, the total. I see the total is not correctly working, so I have to configure that later on. But let's click on book now. Uh, let's see what happens. It should be booking. Yes, your appointment has been received. So now I would receive an email on this. But if I go to the dashboard, we can see if we click on appointments that we do have one appointment. It's a service styling by Mark Watson. My name is you. My email is this. And then we can say the date, the time. And if we click on the pencil, we can see that yeah, the payment is still pending because we didn't pay anything. This is a service. Uh, we get the phone number, we get everything, which is really cool. What you can also do is you can also click on calendar. So now we have a calendar for this month, which is amazing, right? So if I click on here, I can see, uh, oh, I have an appointment. Great. If I want to cancel or I want to do anything, just call this number or email this email address. That is simply amazing. We also have a timeline. I don't really get the timeline. Um, it's weird. Let's just keep it a calendar. Uh, yeah, we can also manually add appointments. As you can see, I'm not going to do that, but that's how it works, basically. All right, so that was that for this section. In the next section, we are going to implement this as well, but we're going to do it in the header. So we're going to edit the header a little bit. We're going to make a pop up and we're going to make some deviations in when we want to show the header and we don't want to show the header because we're going to have two separate headers. One is going to show the pop up and one is going to show or is going to scroll down on the service page uh, to this specific menu anchor uh, on these services. So yeah, uh, let's go to the next section and see how we would implement everything. Hey everyone, welcome to the next new section. Uh, in this section, I didn't change my clothes because I recorded it immediately after but now we're going to work on the header and the other appointment page so meaning that that you have a pop-up and um yeah basically that that we're gonna have a pop-up so let's go and take a look at how to implement this 
All right, so I am in my back end. So let's just go back. Let's go over to templates and click on add new. And we want to create a pop-up. And this pop-up is gonna be a pop-up that's Dutch. Uh, but indeed, I want to have a appointment pop-up. So let's create this template. And now Elementor is going to ask us if we want to use a predefined pop-up, which we don't because uh, we are gonna do some cool stuff in here. All right, so the very first thing that we wanna do is we wanna click on settings at the left-hand side. And we want to set the horizontal to the right and the vertical to the middle, which is fine. But if we click on height, we're gonna click on fit to screen. Now, maybe it is um, important that I show you uh, what exactly we are building. So I'm gonna show you, let's put over this. If you click an appointment, this is gonna happen. So this is what we're gonna build in this section. Basically the same as we, as we have already done before. Let's put that to the side here. And all right, let's go to our settings and click on style and the background type. Because this background type, we want to set it to accent black, as you can see. All right, so first of all, let's add in one section with a minimum height. And this section is going to get uh, a header. So let's put in a heading and I'm going to say book an appointment. Now, obviously this is way too big. So we're going to scale this down to a, maybe a subheading, which looks totally fine for me. Um, I do want to add, let's see, the vertical align to the top, to the top. And now if we go to the column, we can give this a little bit of padding. So let's just put it at four EMs, which is perfectly fine. Let's see if we can make this a little bit bigger. And uh, no, let's just keep it at the sub heading. Right, so let's drag it in a divider because we do want to make this look really awesome, right? 20%, give it an orange color. Let's make it of weight two and the gap of zero. And maybe we can even say that the padding or the margin is negative one on top, maybe negative two. That's a negative two, that looks good. All right, for now, the magic. We can actually, you know what we can do, by the way? Instead of going over and, um, instead of going over and restyle the entire font, I'm gonna go over and go, uh, you know, I'm gonna save this draft. I'm gonna go back into our service I'm gonna edit this with Elementor. I'm gonna copy the style of the previous, um, the previous font that we already, or the previous form that we already created. So here it is. I'm just gonna copy this over and I'm gonna right click, paste the style so that we have the styling set up correctly. The only thing that we wanna do right now is we wanna set, uh, this is going to be the static one, not the specific or the service one, but this is the static page. Now let's put this at Ajax as well. The only thing that I want to change here is for the labels to be of color white, as you can see. And um, yes, that's great. Um, Okay, uh, let's see the descriptions, white, basically everything that we can see that should be white is going to be white. So also the um, appointment calendar, you know what? I'm just gonna publish this 
and I'm gonna say save and close that's the first thing that we're gonna do what we do want to do is I want to go over to my templates and I want to create a new heading because the header that we have right now this is gonna be the header for uh, let's call this static pages St static page header that's what I'm gonna call it static page header what I'm gonna implement here is from my templates I'm gonna click on the header of the barbershop and I don't want to apply because I'm gonna set up my own settings now instead of doing nothing I want to make sure that we have a pop-up here so I'm gonna click on the link options no, I'm gonna click on the dynamic tags and I'm gonna scroll down until we see a pop-up. Then we click on the wrench and open pop-up and I'm gonna say, set pop-up, appointment pop-up template. Great. And let's publish this now. That is perfectly fine, but we do want to include it on the entire site, but we want to add another condition because we're gonna exclude it from all of the singular services that we have because on the services we want to scroll down to the specific service right so I'm gonna save and close and I'm gonna exit and I'm gonna go to my templates and select the header uh, that we first created which is the header of barbershop and because I want to display my conditions and I want to include it in every site but no, that's not true. I want to include this on the uh, singular services. That's where I want to display this. And I want to exclude it on, no, just put it on singular services. And instead of going to hashtag, we want to go to hashtag appointment and now if we go to a specific service and we click on appointment we go down to the appointment but if we go to our home page and click on appointment you can see that we get the book an appointment which is great but as you can see, uh, if we click on the appointment, it's gonna say select service and nothing is gonna happen and we can't do anything. What is happening here? Well, what we have to do is we have to design or we have to basically change the form around. So the very first thing we have to do is we have to go into Jet Engine Forms and you need to click on the static page booking form and instead of making the service ID a select I want to make this a radio that's what we're gonna do we're gonna make a radio all right and I'm gonna apply these and I'm gonna update and let's take a look what's happening now and I don't expect this to work as you can see it's not working uh, it's not working right so let's go ahead and change that Right, so I had to pause the video there, but I know what we have to do now. So if we click on the static page booking form, you do want to make sure that the post type is a service. And that's it. And we do need to select a custom item template because we need to style a little thing more. That's the last thing we have to style before everything is done, I promise you. So what you do is jet engine and click on listings because we do need to make a new listings. So listing sources post, and that is gonna be service listing item name. We're gonna say this is gonna be services, services listing, and we do want to use Elementor for this. So let's create it and style it. So let's make a three uh, section with the structure of 16, second, six, 66 and 16. I'm gonna make the background color for now black because I do want to see what is happening. Because we're all gonna work with white colors. 
So the very first thing is on the left side, we want to implement a check mark. Now this check mark is going to have a, let's say radio noise circle, perhaps an open circle. There we go. And um, let's take a little peek here. Um, the icon color is going to be white. There we go. And let's put the vertical line in the middle. That's amazing. Uh, one thing to make sure is that you want to make sure that it's aligned to the left if you can. So the way I did this is, how did I do this? Ah, yeah, that's it. I selected the item, I went to advance and set the width to inline, and now it's to the left. Now let's go ahead and check on, click on checked and select circle once more. Uh, but I already see it here, dot circle, that is the checked one. Next, we want to add a dynamic field. So add in a dynamic field over here. And let's say um, source is fine. Option field is also fine. Um, all right. Let's change the style to a white color completely white and I want to say work sans 18 work sans and let's put this at 18 and let's also do some vertical alignment in the middle but I need to set yeah like this uh, all right Oh, it says styling, as you can see right now. So that's great. That means that it's working. Uh, let's put it on the left. This is all right. Yeah, all right. So this and this is completely fine. Now we want to add a dynamic field once more because we also want to see the price here. And this price is going to be metadata and we're gonna say price there you go price um let's take a look at customize field output and i want to set a euro sign before this or a dollar sign this basically means the the variable that is going to show so percentage s is the variable that is going to show Let's make the color white. Oh, 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 color white. There it already is. And let's put in work sans. And let's align this to the middle as well. Now, it is important that everything is of inline width. So now we can say width in line that is really important and don't forget to remove the background on the end uh, we can even say that we just want to make the background transparent which is fine as well so let's update this and let's go back into our wordpress dashboard and let's click on uh, let me think for a moment where were we we were on the pop-up so I'm gonna to go to the appointment pop-up and I'm gonna edit it with Elementor. It's really late guys, it's 11 in the evening right now. And I don't know why, but it is white. And I do think that this has to do with uh, some styling that we still need to do. Labels is white, descriptions is white. Um, let's put this at work sounds as well. There are no descriptions, I believe. Um, Checkpoke radio fields, that's what we want. The color, let's put it at white. There we go, that's better. Let's go to work sounds. Um, let me check. I'm gonna go ahead and open my 
uh, demo website on the left screen here so I can actually take a little bit of a peek and see what we're doing. So let's start from the top. Labels, work sans 16500, that's fine. Uh, this is all fine. Fields, let's check in what we've done here. This is everything we've done already. Uh, check boxes. You know what it's not doing? It's not showing my checkbox. Ah, and I know exactly why. I know exactly why, that's what we forgot. We uh, Let's go ahead and save this draft. Let's go back to the WordPress dashboard, let's go to Jet Engine Forms, click on the static page, go to the service ID and select custom item template. And I want to set the services listing here and then apply the changes and update this. And now if we reload the pop-up, uh, save the draft. If we reload the pop-up, as you can see, there it is. There is our really cool styling. Um, it didn't do the price for now because I think I forgot to add the work sans style to it, but you know, that's fine. Let's just uh, let's just continue off with this for now because the functionality is there, guys. I mean, come on. Um, uh, let's go and see what happens. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna update this. I'm gonna save and close this. What I do want to do is set an entrance animation to fade into the left and an entrance to fade out to the right. And let's just go and take a quick look at what exactly we have built right now. Ooh, I think I inverted the, yeah. All right, so let's click on styling and see what happens. Ah, yeah, this is something we still need to set up because the appointment is a little bit dark right now. So let's go ahead and go to the uh, appointment calendar. All right, the header background is going to be white. And the header text color, we can keep it like this. We basically only want the background color to be right, white. Header, background color, background color, topography, color, I don't know what this is. Background color, white. So let's see what we have already changed around here. Ah, that's better. Um, all right, so that's the appointment stuff. So let's go ahead, you know what? Let's go ahead and let's test our appointment. So I'm gonna fill in, I'm gonna book an appointment right now. So let's go for styling. I want with Charles Smith, I want on this day. And let's click on next. And let's put in my name, Yoop. And I'm gonna use my spam email. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna fill in an email here that you guys won't see. All right, so it is booked. And if I go to my email, I will probably have uh, a registration. So let's go ahead and take a look if everything is set up. And yeah, guys, as you can see, we have Hello Youp. Thanks for your appointment. We accept your appointment on this day. You're being held by Charles Smith. This is what you booked styling. You will have to pay this amount on the end of the service. See you soon. That obviously needs to be fixed. And let's go and take a look at what um, 
uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what the uh, what the owner actually gets all right guys so in our email we see a new appointment with the name the date the specialist the styling and the amount to pay now this variable obviously is not working correctly but we need to fix that uh, I'm gonna do that in the upcoming section uh, so basically our uh, course is finished right now every functionality is built in uh, from now on we're just gonna have a couple of sections on and we're gonna do some little extras such as implementing this into our uh, Google Calendar because that would be pretty awesome as well to do and I'm also gonna fix up the um, um, the variable with the pricing because that's something we do want to have fixed and other than that everything is already come to an end so let's go ahead and go to the next section see how we should fix everything and uh, yeah let's let's close this amazing course to an end all right guys welcome to this next section in this section i'm going to show you how to fix the calculator because the calculator the price calculator didn't work and i'm going to show you how to fix it it's really easy uh, all you have to do is go to your service click on a specific service and make sure that the price here equals the price per slot all right now let's do that for all of these so 15 let's put that here as well 15 let's update this men's haircut that's 25 and it should be 25 here as well let's update this and that's it basically so now if we go to the website no if we go to a specific service let's see service 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 and we go to there and we go to the appointment and we select one and a date we can see that now the total is working which is really amazing so that is everything for uh fixing up the uh um, this thing let's go to the next section which is also uh, fortunately finally for this course the last section so we'll see you there and that's it guys that's the entire course of how to add chat appointments to a website that we built from scratch uh, I know we didn't finish all of the pages such as an about us and a contact page but I believe you can do that on your own with the knowledge we did in this video such on the home page itself uh, adding this to the uh, adding the appointments to the calendar I'm not gonna cover that in this course because it's basically a bit too much work and the course is getting too long already uh, I'll put a nice video in the description down below uh, it's by Crocoblock and they explain it really nicely for you so you can follow that and it works perfect I also did it for me and for myself and it works perfectly so basically just go ahead and follow that but yeah I want to thank you for everything um, yeah for watching and for for all of your uh, comments and likes and, and subscriptions if there is anything I can help you with please let me know I will cover all of your problems into videos because basically all of the videos I create are problems that you guys send to me which is really amazing and it keeps me going for doing this so it has been a long course um, if you want to you can subscribe to the channel and keep notified for upcoming videos maybe like or share this video with uh, a couple of other persons that you might want to use this i've been putting a lot of effort into this and it's also my first course anyway enough of that um i really hope you guys did enjoy this and you learned something from this and uh, hopefully we will build a new course in the coming future so thanks for watching and as always i will see you in the next video so bye bye